Drawing in a new perspective is a great way to add a refreshing and interesting take on your art. Today we're going to make an illustration that uses the top down or bird's eye view perspective and we're going to use Procreate's built-in tools that sets your vanishing point as well as use drawing assist that will allow you to always draw toward that vanishing point. These two tools do so much work for you and it makes learning drawing in perspective so much easier. So let's go over to my drawing desk and we'll learn how to use these tools together. So before we start our illustration, let's make sure we understand the concepts of drawing in perspective. Like what is a vanishing point? And that is a spot on your canvas where it looks like things disappear into the distance. And it helps make your drawings look 3D instead of flat. So let's just quickly go over three different types of perspective and then I promise we'll get into our illustration, but let's just go over this real quick. So first let's go ahead and turn on the perspective tool on our Procreate, go to the Actions tab and then Canvas, and then turn on a drawing guide. And this just turns on a grid, but what we want is a perspective or a vanishing point. So tap on Edit Drawing Guide, and then down here is perspective and it gives you a blank screen but then up here it says tap to create vanishing points so let's start a one point perspective vanishing point and that can usually just go right in the middle of your screen and then to turn on the drawing assist we could have done that when we were setting our perspective but you can do it out here as well just tap on your layer and then go to drawing assist and now let's talk about the one point perspective Everything goes toward one dot and it's great for drawing things like a road or a hallway. And a one point perspective is what we're gonna to use today to make that top down illustration. A two point perspective is where all your lines go toward two dots. It helps when you wanna draw something like a corner of a building. And the last one I wanna talk about is the three point perspective. And this one has three dots or three different vanishing points. This is one you can use to draw really tall buildings from above or below like this. And it even kinda of looks like a popcorn bucket. So if you wanna draw a giant popcorn bucket, that's <laughs> what comes to mind drawing this one. That's something that you could try too. So now that we understand the different types of perspective and the role that vanishing points play in this type of drawing, let's go ahead and make our illustration that we're going to do today. So what I want to do today was take an illustration that I posted to my Instagram recently and then reimagine that and re-illustrate it in this new type of perspective. And we're going to be doing it in a top-down perspective, like I mentioned. It's going to be a great way to freshen it up and make it look new and a little bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and set up our canvas. So I've got a blank canvas that is 1080 pixels by 1350 pixels. That is just the standard Instagram size and now we can set up our drawing assist and our drawing guide for that. So we'll go to actions again and then turn on a drawing guide, edit drawing guide, and set our perspective. So I want my vanishing point to be in the middle but I kind of want it toward the lower third or lower fourth of the page or of the canvas just so that it's not completely top down so that all we see is the top of our little characters heads but we see a little bit of their body and form just to make it a little bit more interesting. And I'm going to turn up the thickness on my drawing guide so you can see it really well. So now that we have our vanishing point set let's turn on drawing assist. I did it again where I could have done it from the other screen but let's just do it from our layer stack. So we tap on our layer and we turn on our drawing assist. And right now I'm just gonna kind of set up a guide for where I want my characters and then we'll draw them in using those guides. So I just wanna use a pencil for now. I'm gonna go to the sketching tab and then just grab the Narinder pencil. So I'm just gonna sketch out where I want my characters to sit. My characters are gonna be sitting down and we're gonna be seeing them from a top-down perspective. In between this space here and this space here, there's going to be my character's legs and in between this space here and this space here, here and there are gonna be their heads because their heads are gonna be bigger because they're gonna be closer to us. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my original illustration as a reference. So I'm gonna go to actions again and tap on reference and tap on image and then import in my original image. So I have it to kind of know what I'm supposed to place in my illustration. I know I have my two characters here and they have a drink, a slice of pizza, they have their potato chips and they have their mp3 player. So a few of these items are pretty short and small and so we're just going to really see them as a flat lay and we don't have to add a whole lot of perspective to them. The soda is probably one of the tallest things that are in this little collection of items in front of them. So I want to place where my soda is going to go. So in order to have a guide for my soda, I am just going to put lines going down 
toward my vanishing point so that I can draw out my soda and create the height from it with that perspective. So I'll show you what I mean once we get to that part of the sketch. So this doesn't look like a whole lot right now and that's okay because we're gonna, <laughs> our next step is to add all, all the details of what we want to illustrate. So I'm gonna add a new layer above my drawing assisted layer and I'm not gonna turn on drawing assist on this one. I wanna have the freedom to make curves and lines and all of that stuff when I'm drawing my characters. And I just needed these lines as a guide to how they needed to be facing and the size of what they should be or how much space they need to be taking according to this type of perspective. So let's go ahead and draw our first character So now I have the basic form of my bunny here because his ears are gonna be up higher. We're only seeing the tops of them and maybe the base of them. So in this perspective, you kind of have to think about that stuff. When things are closer to the screen or facing towards you from a top-down perspective, you're, they're not gonna be shaped quite the same. Now I wanna place where his eyes are gonna go and I'm just going to give myself another guide and I'm going to draw a little line here and this is gonna be his eye line, and his nose is pretty close to his eye line, so I'm just gonna draw him in his nose there, and his eyes can go there and there. I just realized his nose is not quite centered, so I'm just gonna scooch it over, and that looks like a pretty good spot for his eyes and his nose. My bunnies are pretty identical. His ear is flopped over a little bit and his eyes are closed. So I'm just going to make a copy of this guy and duplicate him and share him over across my screen uh, because they are so similar. I'm gonna make a few adjustments. So now my bunnies are sketched out and they really do have that top down perspective and they have that look of us looking kind of from the top but a little bit to the side so it's not just we're seeing the top of their heads, we're seeing a little bit of their bodies and that's how this type of perspective is meant to look. So now I'm gonna sketch out the items that are in front of them and let's start off with the soda here and this one is the bigger one, so we're gonna use that perspective. And so here's the top of the soda, but we're gonna see a little bit of the bottom poking out because it is a taller item than the other ones. So now I'll just draw a flat lay of the other items because they are so flat to the ground. We don't really need to add any depth to them. They'll just be a flat lay portion of this illustration. So now our sketch is all done and we've got that top-down perspective that we wanted to add to this. And it really does kind of change how the bunnies look. They almost kind of look like bears now, but I'm okay with that. I maintained the same look of their faces and uh, you know things look kind of different from up top. So I'm totally fine with that. But we've got everything that's in front of them and it's a new way to look at this illustration. So now let's do the lining and the color fill to complete this illustration. We don't need our drawing guide on anymore so I will turn off our little guide that we did there and turn off drawing assist and let's turn off our vanishing point as well so we'll go back to actions canvas and then we'll just toggle off drawing guide. I'm gonna use the monoline brush from my sketching tab and I have a monoline brush that I edited to increase the streamline and the stabilization just so that it kind of takes out the shakiness in my hand. I want to use probably 10%, so I'm going to set those favorites so that I maintain a continuity with my line work on here. I'm going to be using a color palette that I created for this. It's not the same color palette as my original image, so that's another way we're kind of refreshing and reimagining this. We're kind of changing the color tone as well. And I'm sharing this color palette with you for free 
free. And if you click on the link in the description, you can get this color palette as well if you wanna recreate this illustration too. So to do the line work, I'm gonna choose this darker brown that I have. I have a couple different browns, but the darkest brown is gonna be my line work. I will turn down the opacity of my sketch and I'm just gonna do all the outlines. So now all of our lining to our illustration is complete. I just have a little bit I want to clean up right here. I used my sketch as more of a guideline because there was a couple things I needed to kind of redraw and I added the lines that were from my original drawing from the on the headphones. And I didn't draw his little blanket here because I wanted to see his whole body so that we get that full effect of that perspective. So now I want to do my color fill and in order to do that, I'm gonna show you a really quick way to do a color fill. So I'm gonna add a new layer and I'm gonna place it below my lining layer. On that lining layer, if you tap on the thumbnail, you tap on reference. Now you can go to that blank layer and just start adding your colors one by one to each section. It makes color filling your illustrations so much faster and I love this tool. And to make this go even faster, you can select your color, drag and drop it in the first spot, and then tap on continue filling, and then just fill in by just tapping every time that color appears on the screen. And I love this feature too because it speeds up absolutely everything. So now I'm going to do that with all of the other colors that I want to use. So now that our color fill is complete, I'm ready to add a background and some shadows. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn off the reference setting on my line art layer. To do that, you just tap on the layer and then uncheck reference. And next I wanna add a background color and I could just change the background color directly, but sometimes I prefer to create a new layer at the very bottom and color drop in a new shade instead. So I'm gonna pick this peach color and drop it into the new layer. Now we need to add some shadows beneath our characters and the objects around them. So I'll add a new layer above the background color and set the blending mode to multiply. And once those shadow shapes have been drawn in, I'll lower the opacity just a bit to help it blend in a little bit more naturally. Next, I wanna add shadows to the actual characters and a bit of the surrounding items as well. But before I do that, I realized I forgot to add the rosy cheeks. So I'll quickly make a new layer and then draw in the rosy cheeks. And then I'm also gonna lower the opacity on this layer too for just a little bit of a softer look. So now I'm ready to add the shadows to my characters. I'll create another new layer and turn on a clipping mask and set that blending mode to multiply once again and I'm using this light peach color as my shadow tone since white doesn't multiply very well on top of white it actually doesn't multiply at all so I'll shade the areas of the character's body where I want a soft shadow effect and once I'm done again I'll turn down that opacity just to help it blend in a little bit more and then I'll move on and repeat the same process for the second character and my nearby objects that need a little bit of shadow. And there we go, our illustration is all finished. It's been reimagined with a new color palette and a new perspective. And you can try this illustration yourself, but you can also take the same concept of the one point perspective and apply it to all kinds of drawings to create this cool dimensional look. I really enjoyed drawing this with you. So let's do another illustration together. Go ahead and click on this video and I will meet you there. <laughs>